A really important activity you ought to take care of now in the home vegetable garden is having your soil tested. A soil test is important not only to learn what the nutrient level of the soil is, but also to learn what the pH and the organic matter level of the soil is so that you'll have ample time to correct this before next spring's planting. I like to recommend that you take a representative sample from several areas in the garden in the top three to six inches of the soil. If garden residue is still on the soil left over from the fall garden, it has not been tilled in yet, be sure that you rake that residue away before you take a sample from that area. Only a small amount in each area of soil is all that you need, but it is important that you get three to four different locations throughout the garden so that you have a really good mix and representative sample of the entire garden area. Once you have obtained these representative samples from around the garden and put them in a pail such as we're doing here, then mix those well to be sure that you have all these samples well blended and then take about a pint of this soil to your local county extension office so it can be forwarded on to the agronomic service lab at OSU for analysis. I'm using a regular soil test bag in which the soil can be placed in. These are available at no charge from your local county extension office. But you may also just bring your soil in a plastic bag, a plastic container, a coffee can, or any type of unbreakable container to the soil, to the county extension office, as long as you have about a pint of the soil for sampling. Once you've taken it to your extension office, they will obtain some information from you on what you intend to grow on the soil, what some of the past history of the soil has been, and you want to be sure to emphasize to them that it is for a garden soil. Now the test for, a, or the, the charge for a soil analysis is $6. This is money well spent because it gives you some idea of what you have in your soil as far as level of nutrients, and as I mentioned also organic matter and the soil pH. Generally, one soil test is all you're going to need from your home vegetable garden, unless you have a particular problem spot in the garden in which you've had something that leads you to believe that it is a soil problem. Then you'll want a separate sample from that particular spot itself and be sure to identify that it is a problem spot. Or if you have a crop that you want a specific recommendation for, such as strawberries or asparagus or some other crop in the garden, then you'll want a sample from that also. But I would only encourage you to go ahead and have your soil analyzed at this time of the year this is usually the off season for the soil testing laboratory, so your results will get back to you much quicker, but it also gives you adequate time to make any type of soil amendments or preparations before next spring's planting. So I would recommend that you do that as quickly as possible. I think it will be time and money well spent. Although a soil test will tell you if you need to add fertilizer to your soil, it doesn't give you a reading of the organic matter content. And the organic matter in soils is what makes them nice and friable, gives them good tilth, makes it a good place for roots to grow. And the only way to have soil be nice and easy to work is to add plenty of organic matter. Now this is some manure that was donated to us by the Oklahoma Bull Testing Station. Now out there, they've got a different word for it than manure or organic matter, but we'll take it any way we can get it. And they were nice folks, gave us a whole dump truck load. This will really help our garden. Well, if you can't find manure in your neighborhood, if you live right in town, let me give you some tips on some sources for it, because it's great for the garden. If you have a fairgrounds near you, county fairgrounds or state fairgrounds, they often have livestock judging events there, or uh, horse racing, anything like that. Check the places, ask them if you can have some manure out of the stalls after the event is over with. Also, if there's a zoo in your town, in Oklahoma City or Tulsa, very often the animals that are herbivores, that eat just vegetative matter, produce a lot of manure and they're willing to get rid of that. In fact, if the Tulsa Zoo gives away their manure from the pachyderm houses and they call it pachy poo. Well, if you can't find manure locally, you can always 
compost, garden refuse. Th these are some canna leaves that we cut out of the garden and they need to dry down before we run them through the chipper shredder. But this is a lot of good organic matter in the garden. Leaves that are falling from trees are another excellent source. Right now, this time of year, I just hate to see those black plastic sacks out by the curb in front of people's houses because that is free organic matter that they could just run over with their lawnmower. That chops it up just enough. They could put it in a pile in the garden to use next spring or spread it over the surface of the soil. Another source of organic matter is straw. Now, finding clean straw is difficult. This is some nice wheat straw that we have here, but it probably will have some weed seeds in it. Prairie hay can have the same problem, but if that's all you can find, that's just fine. Now, any of these materials in the form that they're in still have some biodegrading to do. The manure was just fine like it was. We'll probably put about a three inch layer of that over our garden because it's been composting for quite a while. But materials such as this, such as the straw or the canna leaves, still need to break down before they can help break up our soil particles and make it easy to work. And so we'll probably try to compost some of this. Let me show you how. If you're planning to compost some of that garden waste, keep in mind that going into winter, our ambient temperatures are going to be much colder, and so you're going to work harder to make it compost itself. Chop up any coarse materials, such as these geraniums, and put them in the bin. Layer them with a couple shovelfuls of soil, some manure, some fine green grass clippings. That'll help add some nitrogen and speed up the breakdown process. Keep it moist and turn it every two weeks so that you can end up with some good material to put on the garden. Now keep in mind, in the garden, you can't put on too much organic matter in Oklahoma. A three to four inch layer of it in the fall and the spring will do wonders for your soil. Well, that's all the time we have today on Oklahoma Garden. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.